Today we're talking all about stories. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're talking all about stories. I'm not even messing with the computer. In fact, like for the first time ever, I've got regular sheets of paper um, on Flurn. Um, what we're talking about today is basically the whole idea behind creating a story and why you should do it and what can what it can do with your photos. And we talk a lot about Flurn on um, creating a connection with your viewer. Um, you know, you can do it through emotions and stories and even like celebrities. The, the reason why celebrities tend to work is because they tend to, you already have a relationship with that celebrity. Like you don't have to um, spend a whole lot of time or it's, it's actually a lot easier to make a connection when you use a celebrity because people, when they view an image, already have like a connection. They already know who that person is and they already have like a mental image of um, what, what they're gonna be like. So that's why celebrities connect with brands well because um, they don't really have to tell that story over again. People already know the story of the celebrity. But we're not talking about celebrities today. We're talking about how you guys can create your own stories in your photos and how those are gonna help. So I've got a really cool exercise we're gonna to do today. It's short and sweet, um, it's really cool. But basically, there are a couple elements of, that are gonna be in a story and identifying those elements and then just kinda of like doing this quick exercise can help you guys create pictures that are a little bit um, more round. So you have three elements in a story. You have your characters, your subjects, whatever you have your place and you have your objects. Um, so those three elements, when they combine together, they create a full story. And if it's just one or just the other, you wind up usually with some, a photo that's a little bit more hollow or just something that's not uh, completely done. So um, I'll give you an example, like photos that are you know, just standard portraits on a gray background. You don't really have a location for those because it's just a gray background. And you don't really have an object for those either. You just have the character. So, that's why, you know, at least in my opinion, uh, you know, people just on a gray backdrop tend to be a little bit static, like there's not much there. The only time that I really enjoy those pictures is when there's a lot of motion being carried through in, you know, the face or w whatever this person is doing. But, you know, even if they're holding something, that still brings it up to two. That brings it up to the person, the character, and an object, but you still don't have a location. So, if you guys are like, Kind of trying to figure out how to make this happen. Um, I got a quick exercise for you and it's awesome. Um, it was taught to me by a friend of mine, so I cannot take credit for it. I also can't tell you who, ta who taught it to me. Um, but here's what you do. Basically, just think of a, a list of characters and you can do this in many, many ways. Like I'm just gonna write them on some pieces of paper. It's not, you know, you don't have to do it this way, but the end goal is all the same. It's creating a story. Um, so I'm gonna start it out. We're gonna write down characters. And then literally you just think of like, you know, any characters you have in mind. All right, so I'll think of something like a mythical flying snake. <laughs> a mythical flying snake. Don't tell, don't ask me where I get these ideas. I don't know. Um, we'll think of like a prince and I want this prince to live in Scandinavia. And I want that to be like in the 1600s. So that's like the Scandinavia doesn't have to be the place, but that's like the prince. Um, and then we'll do the third one. And this, it can be literally anything, um, you know, any kind of people, but maybe we'll do a group of two people. So uh, two people who are getting together, maybe a husband and wife. All right, husband and wife. So those are our characters. Now I'm gonna kind of set this aside and uh, we're gonna start with a new piece of paper. Let's see, characters right there. We're gonna join them together. I wanted to make sure you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see this. All right, so the characters. Now, I'm kind of setting that aside, and the next thing I want to come up with is like a subway station. And I'm just thinking these off the top of my head. And you know, if you want to use these, uh, feel free, but it's, it's pretty easy. You just go, hmm, where's a place? That sounds kind of cool. Um, and usually I, I, you know, making different types of places. Um, let's think on a glacier. I think that sounds pretty cool. And the last one we'll do in a tropical forest. All right, so those are my places. And again, I'm not trying to relate these back. I'm just naming three, and you can do this with a lot. All right, the next we'll have our objects. And we'll have like, let's say, a wine bottle. And you can make these really cool. I'm just making things that are a little bit more simple. Uh, a wine bottle, the next thing I want is a forklift. And the next thing I want is a big, like those tractor tires, you know, the giant ones from the land movers and stuff. All right, tractor 
tire or tires. OK, so that's uh, the first half of our exercise. Now all you have to do is kind of match these together. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off by matching the, the characters with the places. So we have both of these lists, and we match the characters with the places. So literally, it's just like, which ones look good? And we have a husband and wife, and I kind of want to put those in a, on a glacier. I think that would be kind of funny. So husband and wife go with a glacier. You can just write the, rewrite them. I'm going to write a, like a circle and a triangle and a square next to them so I know where they're going. All right, a mythical flying snake. Uh, we'll put that in a tropical forest. So I'll put a square next to that one. Normally, I'd probably rewrite these out, but uh, I'm trying to be quick. All right, and a subway station uh, with a Scandinavian prince from the 1600s. OK, now we take that a ne next step further. So we have our Scandinavian prince um, in a subway station. What are they doing um, with a wine bottle? That would be kind of cool. All right, with a wine bottle. Um, we have our husband and wife team with a glacier on a glacier and a, um, a forklift. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Um, and then we have a mythical flying snake uh, in a tropical forest with a tractor tire. This is very interesting. You might want a little bit more variance in these so you can make some sense. But um, even just doing this, like I got ideas kind of racing through my head. Like a uh, husband and wife on a glacier in a forklift and a forklift, like I'm kind of thinking in my head like a husband and wife team or, you know, like they've been maybe they're uh, Eskimos or Inuits and um, they've been like hiking for a long time and they kind of come upon this. They're on like a glacier, but they come across like an ice wall and like buried in the ice wall is like an ancient forklift that's just like stuck in there and they're like, what's going on here? Um, and <laughs> the whole idea for these is just to make something. I mean, these can be funny, they can be serious, they can be whatever you want, um, but it's creating a whole story. And you probably could imagine that you know, when I was talking about the couple and the glacier, like seeing this forklift, like you could probably see that picture in your head and it creates a whole story. It's a lot more interesting than just someone like on a backdrop being like, oh, I'm happy. Um, so that's the point of today is creating these stories. This is one way that I have. If you guys have any other ways to create stories or like other really cool methods you have in like conceptualizing and coming up with ideas, let us know. Leave it in a comment below and uh, we can all gain from that. So, or if you have like uh, um, some ideas on this same method, like making charts or graphics or anything like that, I'd love to know. And again, this is like, it, the reason why we're teaching this is to get you guys to have like a little bit more rounded uh, stories. So, you know, something where it's like a lot is going on in this picture, you're telling an entire story and it's not just so static and plain. So that's today's episode. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna keep creating some of these and uh, we're gonna do some photo shoots based on ideas like this. So keep in tuned, keep stay tuned <laughs> to flurn.com. I'll flurn you guys later. Bye everyone. Keep in tuned. Keeping it in tune. I still wanna do the news anchor thing with these pieces of paper. The mythical flying snake in the tropical forest with the tractor tire. That one was kind of a fail. <laughs>